All right, so these are the calorimeters, bomb calorimeters, but they're really just calorimeters. We use use them for bomb calorimetry or also just hot and cold water experiments or any kind of solution calorimetry. And so you come in here, um, this is for the TAs or any of the, any of the students who also are new to this. You come in and we've got these hooked up to Raspberry Pi systems. So this is a little card computer. Um, it's actually much smaller than this. It's just this card right here in the bottom. I bought this little monitor to go on top, but it, that's sort of extra. You can just get this little card. Uh, the hard disk is an SD card and it's got an HDMI port, USB ports, and a Linux or uh, yeah, Linux operating system ready to go. They have these little wireless keyboards too that always need to be charged and they're almost never charged. So, so we'll go ahead and start it up. Just plug it in and it starts up. Let's see when the light comes on. Well, the keyboard cables are in this, in this drawer here. Okay, red light says, yeah, it needs to be charged. Oh, It's a cool little keyboard, yeah. Yeah, there we go. So your little thumb, your trackpad. Left mouse button, right mouse button. You can also use a little like a D-pad up here and cycle through everything. Um, but that doesn't get you onto a different dialog box. So I'm gonna come down here and get rid of this error message by left clicking until we're ready to go. Now, um, so this is the, the sort of the computer system. And the reason we went with these is because if you'll notice a regular computer system takes up about two square feet of space. And all it's doing is listening to the serial port. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a big waste of space to just listen to the serial port. This thing can listen to the serial port and not take up any space. Right. We really don't even need the monitor. We could look at this tiny little screen and see what was going on, but that is too small. Right. And so I went ahead and went with the monitor. Um, we come down here at the bottom. We type, click on this little um, terminal window and bring this up, and we type in CuteCon. C U T E C O N, CuteCon, and hit enter. And it runs this little communication uh, software. Okay. It will listen to the serial port. Okay. Now it's not listening to anything because the, the, the calorimeter is off, but that's the software that we're using. Okay. And we'll get into that in a little bit more. I'm going to turn on the, the um, calorimeter next, and we'll just. Um, see how to set it up. Now there's a couple of things that we have to do every year to get it happy because it also has an internal battery that's bad. So it doesn't save the settings from one year to the next. Okay. So that's not that's good. Fun. Yeah, so we turn the calorimeter on back here with this switch. Um, there's really not much going on with the calorimeter. It's just a really fancy thermometer. It has this um, platinum resistance thermometer right here. And that's a really expensive thermometer. And it measures to, you know, I don't know, like four decimal places in Kelvin. So it's really very, very sensitive. It's just looking at the resistance of platinum metal um, to measure the temperature. So uh, that's a very well-known metal. It's also chemically inert. And so it's a good thermometer. It gets you away from glass and mercury and all of that stuff. So now this one... Um, it says here, error 2300, cold restart, RAM disk erased. And that's what I was saying about that. It doesn't have a, a good battery in it. Um, and so every year we have to start these up and then we have to sort of reconfigure them um, using these star codes on the front. And the manual is right here. And the different settings are all right here. Okay. And so we just have to figure out how to do the, the different settings. And I always have to relearn it every year because it... Uh, I figured out my short-term memory is less than one year, <laughs> so I run out. <laughs> I run out of my short-term memory from one year to the next, and I have to go back to the manual every year. But that's okay. That's the way it works. That's why you have manuals. That's why you have manuals. Yes. And so this this manual should always be placed back in that drawer, Correct. and if it's not there, you call me in a panic. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's test some of the things that we have on here. Um, we're going to clear that message. Okay by hitting the clear button. And let's, um, if you'll notice on here, there's some star codes 
listed, like the motor star code. And so this will be a good one to practice on. This motor back here is controlled by this, this interface. And this is like an old school com microcomputer interface. You know, it's not controlled by the PC or anything. So we have these star codes. You come down here and you hit star, okay, star 101, enter. And then it's asking for the command. And we hit 1, enter, and the, the little motor should go. So that didn't work. So we'll try it again. Okay, star 101, enter, 1. And that's how you turn the motor on. Okay. What's, yeah. the, what's the two? And then star 101, 2 turns it off. Ah. So star 101, enter, 2, enter, turns it off. Oh, great. Okay. And there it stopped. Yeah. So if then we wanted to make this thing stir, then we put this little belt on there. And we do 1, enter, 1, enter, and there it starts to spin it. Yeah, isn't that cool? It's, it's pretty neat. I pretty say. easy. Yeah, this is the old school. Uh, like, there's a microcontroller in here, and this is the interface that they built for it. And they put all the codes in the manual, and so you can have that microcontroller do all kinds of things for you. You can actually do the calculations for you if you know how to program. Okay, but then that, that we'd spend all our time teaching you how to program this kind of instrument rather than teaching you how to analyze the data. So that's right. not going to be good. So star 101, enter 2, enter, turns that off. Let me just zoom in here and I'll... Let's do the data logger computer format. We'll turn that off and they can see what happens up here at the top. Okay, so these are the star codes, star 191, enter, and then if we turn that off, then it's going to add text up here like a human is reading it. So it's telling us the thermometer is zero, number zero, zero, and channel one temperature is 16.15. It's cold in here, 16 degrees. Yeah, I was thinking, oh, <laughs> a little chilly. I uh, don't think that's accurate. It would really be cold. Um, but it is pretty cold. And then uh, the, the interval, if we were changing the data logging interval, we look here, we see data logging interval. Here's the star code, star 192. Uh, it was set at 10 seconds originally. We set it to 1. So let's go back to 10 and just see. Star, we've got 1, 9, 2, enter. And we can do 10, enter. And so now it should be every 10 seconds we get an update. Yeah. Nine. And there we go. So we'll go back to, to 1 second. So that's star 192, enter, one second, enter. And so then it should go faster now. Have to wait one more cycle of 10 seconds. Yeah, there we go. And then to get rid of all that text, we need to put in data logger computer format, star 191, enter, and we do on. Oh yeah, you don't have to enter when you just do on and off. And so there's our, our computer compatible data. We don't really care about these first three columns, but just after the temperature column. Um, I haven't found a way to clean it up any better than that, okay? But this is really seconds. This is a data point uh, in seconds. Uh, so that's, that's the data. Now in order to capture it, Okay, we need to come down here and, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So right now they've got this benzoic acid file, but we need to add a new one. So if you click that, then you get to type in your data. So you can use the little keyboard. So I'm going to call this um, 2021. Okay, so that's my data. I'm going to put DLW there, so you guys get in the habit of putting your initials on stuff or, or your, your username so that you know that's your data file, and we'll hit save. So then that's, that's the file that it's going to be saved to, and we click this little digit here. It says append, so that's really good. 
we, we don't want to overwrite, we want to append. And so all our data is just going to be appended to the end of our data file. And we click that checkbox and now it's starting to go to that file. So my files, my data file is now collecting data because that little check mark is checked. Yeah, and so then I've come up with another set of hot water and I've got everything cold and I'm ready to go. Um, and I put the cold water in, then I start appending the data and so it's measuring the temperature to cold while I'm getting my hot water weighed out. And then I have my hot water here, it's still collecting data. I put this in the hot water count to five or so, look at the temperature, see when it kind of stabilizes, you know, five or six seconds, and then I put it back here and I, then I'm, I'm collecting data still, I pour it in and set that down, you know, and if you want to put the belt on and spin it, that's fine, but, but really there's not much time, you can just kind of stir like that, and it'll, it'll come to equilibrium fairly quickly, yeah, and so then then I can stop that collection after a while. We can look at the temperature and when it kind of calms down, then we can stop the collection. When I say calms down, I mean it stops changing in like the thousandth of a Kelvin, you know, right. or hundredth of a Kelvin. So when it stops changing down in the decimal places, like hundredths or thousandths, that's calmed down. Okay. And then we can, uh, we can stop the data collection and start another experiment prep pour the water out and everything. So you're not collecting data while you're pouring the water out and moving things around. But when you're ready to go, my goodness, you've got to remember to click that little checkbox or you're not going to have any data. And now let's just check to make sure we, we have our data. So we've got um, all of this. And here's my data file right here. And I can double click that. Or just click on it and hit enter. And there's our our data. Okay. And I'm just going to scroll down. And there it is. Okay. So what's our last data point on here? Um, 1107. Okay. So I'm going to close this guy. Come back down here and open QCOM. It's still collecting data. So I'm going to hit append to. It should just put it at the bottom of that file. So now we should have some 1252, 1253, 1254. Okay. okay, so let me undo that now. Stop that. And let's just see if we've got our data on there. So we come up here, shrink it down. Yeah, so there's the 1250s. It okay. went from 1107 and then it appended the 1250s. Oh, yeah, I see the here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, yeah, so then um, now notice we didn't have much of a temperature jump between these two, but there would be typically if you're putting in fresh water, you went from hot water back to cold. And so there's going to be a lot of, if you were to plot this temperature over time, you'd have a lot of experiments and then a lot of wild jumps and a lot of experiments. You need to chop out your experiments and analyze the experiments. So this raw data file, you can't just analyze straight away. You have to chop it into the various experiments. Yeah. Okay. So that's the essentially the temperature measuring part of the calorimeter. Uh, we're going to then have the bomb calorimetry. We'll have different videos for wiring the bomb and all of that kind of stuff. Okay. But this is pretty straightforward um, using QCOM, using this Raspberry Pi system. And, and so it's great. Here, here's the Raspberry Pi computer you can see on the bottom. You know, so that's pretty cool.